Hi guys, my name is Anuj Jindal. Welcome to my channel and welcome to this video wherein we will be talking about the basics of an upcoming examination that is UPSC APFC which stands for Assistant Provident Fund Commissioner exam. First of all, it is very similar to all the exams that you have been giving till now, specifically the ESIC examination jo ki December mein hone wala hai for, for uh, no, uh, that is the expectation. So it is an examination which is very similar to that. All the UPSC aspirants, all the aspirants who have been preparing for examinations of regulatory bodies, ASRB ka exam ho, chahe wo, uh, RBI ka exam ho, whether it is for NABARD examination or SEBI examination, there are a lot of overlaps that you will see. And therefore, this is a golden opportunity. It is doing a lot of rounds on the internet and I'm very, very certain uh, based upon all the RTA applications that have been received, etc., etc., that the examination is expected to be announced very, very soon. In this session, in this small session, we are going to have a look at all these pointers. These are pointers ko dekhe, ye we'll try and understand the intricacies behind the examination so that we have a decent idea before we decide to actually write or prepare for the examination. Number one thing that we are going to see is whether you are eligible or not. Kya aap eligible hai? Ya aap eligible nahi hai. Number one, number two, is it too difficult compared with UPSC because the name UPSC is attached along with the examination because that is the recruitment body, hiring body. So no, normal tendency is to get very scared about it. Here exam is difficult. Hone wala hai. So we'll try and have an understanding of the difficulty level also. In order to help, help you out decide in advance before actually getting into the well of preparation of this examination, Past year analysis is very important. Jitne bhi past years hain, wo maine website pe dal diye hain. You can go and have a look at those past years. They will help you get a very good understanding. Future mein, wo past years ko mein discuss bhi karunga so that you have a very good understanding ki bhai, is level ka past year mein aaya hai. This is the level expected. It is certainly not as high as UPSC with my current preparation. What all can I be prepared with? Okay. What all to study? Understanding the difficulty level and understanding the syllabus is very important. That will help you determine ki bhai mujhe padna kya hai aur kya nahi padna hai. What to study and what not to study. What's the level of competition? Because your preparation is going to be all relative. It is all about your relative performance and not your absolute performance. Ho sakta hai out of 100 on an absolute number, a performance of 70 is good enough. 70% is very good. However, if the competition is very difficult, very high, or if it is very low, then your performance, uh, the importance of your performance will keep changing accordingly. Okay. Isko bhi samajhne ki koshish karenge in this session mein hi. So in short, we are going to have uh, details, uh, understand details about all these things related to APFC examination. The first point is to understand the syllabus as well as go through past year papers that I will be doing very very shortly past year papers to website pe dal diye hain you can go and register there and get those past year papers bahut achhi understanding aapko already mil jayegi before jumping into the preparation it's very important that you do that okay let us start number 1 pre previous apfc exams what has happened in the previous examinations of apfc kab hue hain exams and kitni vacancies thi that is very important to understand for us okay Number one, it was last released in 2015 after 2012. So, we have that gap hai. That is probably because of the crisis also. A lot of vacancies stopped at that time or reduced. So after 12, 15 was the last vacancy. And we saw EPFO vacancy coming out in the year 2020. So, it is very much expected. The vacancies are already there. They are already pending as per the RTI application. So, it is very much expected that we will see the APFC vacancy is coming out very, very soon. What is the number? What is the general trend of numbers? In 2015, we saw 170 vacancies. In 2012, we saw 253 vacancies. 2004 or 2002 ki vacancies pata nahi chal rahi hai because uh, we cannot locate the official notifications. Even then, it is through the videos, what we have figured is that it was in the range of 150 to 200. Is range mein tha. So it is understood that the normal expectation of vacancies in the year 2021 for APFC is going to be in the range of 150 to 200. This range mein rehne wala hai. That is the expectation we have. Okay. Now, the point that I would wanted to discuss about competition. UPSC mein kitni seats hoti hai? 800 seats. 
what is the competition it is crazy level of competition the syllabus is crazy it is too much for an average student to cover that is a reality bahut time lagta hai on the other hand the syllabus of this is much less number 2 the competition is very high because the number of students writing the examination is very high log do do teen teen saal tak prepare karte hai yahan par aisa nahi hoga that is that is not going to happen here a lot of freshers are going to apply and much less number of students or applicants are going to apply for this exam apfc 170 plus seats aayengi and the competition is going to be limited yahan par competition limited hoga so certainly it is a very good opportunity for a lot of students aapko apply karna chahiye you should be writing this examination with full zeal and confidence theek hai na to preparation karna makes sense because the number of seats are good enough compared with upsc the competition is much limited we will have a look at the number of applicants who gave this examination last time very shortly so i think this is clear pattern of uh, uh, exam aapko clear hai one second yes okay now let's come to the eligibility i hope that is clear how many vacancies we had in the past and how many vacancies are expected if we talk about the eligibility then the minimum age maximum age requirement is 35 years you should be a maximum of 35 minimum age is not given but because it requires you to have a graduation degree at least so expected hai ki 19 20 tak aapki graduation complete hoti hai majority of the students 18 se 20 ke beech mein so those applicants will also be applicable will also be eligible as i said degree of a recognized university or equivalent this means as of now that people who are in their final year jinki degree nahi aayi hai jinki final exam nahi hue hain if the vacancy is released the date on which notification comes out if your final examinations have been conducted and you have received your result then you are eligible usme last date likhi hogi if your final exams have not been conducted or in another situation final exams ho gaye result nahi aaya and the last date of the application is gone then you will not be eligible theek hai so the maximum age is 35 which is a good number which is a very high number so a lot of uh, working aspirants jitne bhi working professionals hain uh, working in the it sector working in the banking sector i think it's a very golden opportunity for you guys roz do teen ghanta bhi padoge i can vouch for this fact that you will be very well prepared for this exam okay desirable diploma in company law or labor laws or public administration now this will be used at the time of interview there are certain marks allotted to this specific criteria only if you have let's say a diploma in labor law or public administration to aapko char panch number extra milte hain all the applicants who are thinking of applying for this can also apply for this diploma ho sakta hai aapko diploma agle 6 mahine mein mil jaye and november mein uh, notification comes out in november let's say by the time the interview starts you already have that diploma they might consider it so that will also be useful so please if you can apply for this diploma in company law or labor law or public administration there are a lot of online courses going on right now aur jitne bhi pubad wagera ke institutions hain country mein all of them are running online you can you can easily identify and verify from their websites okay duties ki baat detail mein bhi karenge but let me discuss them here as well duties of assistant provident fund commissioner to look after the work of enforcement recovery now what happens uh, when you are working uh, in the government in the system is that there are a lot of laws so aise hi there is there are laws on social security okay now there will be people who would want to or who would try to violate these laws bahut sari aisi companies hongi let's say companies going bankrupt or the directors or the uh, you know owners of that comp- company uh, become greedy they start using that social security money us mein bahut hota hai it happens it has started happening in india also the, what they would do is uh, let's say i am an employee in that company maine uh, social security ke naam pe i am depositing some money i have the uh, option of depositing it with the government through esic and various other schemes or at a lot of times people deposit it with their employer also the employer says i will keep it on your behalf itna return denge hum isko invest karenge that happens in that case that is number one case if he or she or the company refuses to pay you that social security down the line then the responsibility of commissioner is to catch hold of uh, the company's neck on the other hand a lot of companies don't pay the social security requirements also the company also has some responsibility if you are paying 
if the government is paying 12%, the company also has to pay 12% of the on the employee's behalf. A lot of companies don't do that. Okay, they have the responsibility and the obligation to pay, but they don't pay. So, par recovery becomes an important point here. Then there is enforcement to ensure that companies who are required to file for social security are doing it. For example, any company where people are employed for salary of less than 15,000 and which has more than 20 employees. Vaha pe social security mein apply karna zaruri ho jata. It becomes compulsory. Okay. So enforcement ensure karna that is also a responsibility of this commissioner. Maintaining the accounts, administration, cash, legal, pension and computer which includes statutory. Statutory means law related and administrative functions. Bahut sare administrative functions hote hain. Lot of statutory functions ensuring that the law is getting implemented, being applicable wherever it is required to be. All those are also jobs of the uh, commissioner. Okay. Settlement of claims, general administration, maintenance of cash book or reconciliation of bank statements, MIS. Ye sari cheeze, all these responsibilities belong to the provident commissioner. In short, your responsibility will be to make sure that the laws related to social security are being enforced, are being implemented. People are not running away from it. People are not involved in frauds related to social security. That is your primary responsibility. This is the responsibility of enforcement. On the other hand, there will be a lot of administrative responsibility also. Day-to-day -day administration, mein jo bhi responsibilities hoti hai, whatever paperwork is included, you have to ensure that that is flowing in smoothly. Okay. Probation, one year. The age limit shown. Now, what is the relaxation available? The age limit shown above is for general candidates. That is 35 years old. That is the maximum age limit. For OBC, you have a relaxation of three years. For SCST and uh, SCST candidates, I think there is a relaxation of five years. Five years, yes. Okay, five years for SCST, three years for OBC. And if you are a physically ha handicapped uh, student, then the age relaxation is 10 years. Let's say you are physically handicapped plus you are OBC. So, you will get total age relaxation of 13 years. Let's say you are physically handicapped plus SC or ST. Then your age relaxation will be 15 years, 10 plus 5. Okay, that has been clarified in the last, this is the last notification which came in 2015. It is expected to see minor changes. Thode bar changes to dekhenge. Not in eligibility, of course, they cannot reduce the eligibility. That is for certain. But syllabus may, I will be discussing about it. We can see very small, small changes. Okay, let's move on to the next one. I hope this is clear. Physically handicapped, I have already told you 10 years and 15 years. If you are an SCST plus physically handicapped, and 13 years if you are a physically handicapped candidate plus you are also belonging to OBC class. Okay, I hope this is clear. Qualification, I have told you, degree of a recognized university or equivalent, this is the minimum qualification. This means that you don't need a master's degree. Number one, you don't need any kind of work X. This is very important. An examination where the maximum age limit is 35 and they were not asking for any experience or any post-graduation degree. I think there are very less opportunities like that. So please keep that in mind as well. Okay. Exam pattern. That is one of the major areas where we need to focus upon. Exam pattern kya hai? It is normally held in two levels. Level 1 is called as recruitment test and level 2 is called as interview okay there are not they don't have three levels they have two levels uh, not like or unlike various other examinations in level one which is the recruitment test the last time they came out with the examination the paper was of total 100 marks duration 120 minutes or two hours and 120 questions so 120 questions 120 minutes 100 marks ye tha normal trend and the negative marking is a little high here one third and not one fourth okay Please remember this. You have to multiply these scores by 4. So, aapke, let's say 100 se aaye. Let's say you scored 70 out of 100. They will convert it into 400. So, kya karenge? 300 karenge. Ye isko 3 karenge. Or iski 1, iska same rega. So, what will happen is, out of 300, they will say, okay, into 3, 210. So, this student score is 210 in phase, in level 1. And let's say this is also 100 marks. Let's say you scored 65 here. 
so your score is 275 this is how they are going to calculate they will multiply test uh, level 1 scores by 3 in order to increase the weightage of level 1 that is what they are going to do okay in level 2 we are going to have an interview of 100 marks jiske parameters ESIC mein bahut achche se defined thi we are expecting similar parameters here also minimum marks requirement is also given general 50 OBC 45 and SCST or PH ke liye 40 this means that if your score is less than 50 or less than 45 or less than 40 depending upon your category you will be disqualified let's say I am a general candidate hu mera interview acha nahi gaya they scored me 45 on 100 the interview panel knows that if I am giving him 45, then I am disqualifying him right away. Okay. So, if the interview panel wants to disqualify you, irrespective of your performance here, they have the power to do that. This gives a lot of power in the hands of the interview panel simultaneously. So, you have to make sure that you go prepared for the interview. Aise hi nahi ja rahe hai, hum prepare karke ja rahe I hope the pattern is clear. Now, this is the syllabus which we saw in the last examination, broad, broad areas. I have also highlighted and uh, put it in brackets the areas which I am expecting in the next notification. Okay. We had questions from general English which were very normal. Jiski abhi thode din mein session start hone wale hain on YouTube as well as uh, uh, updated uh, videos in the course as well by one of our very esteemed and very experienced uh, faculty in English. Jinnoh ne PhD kiya hai English mein bhoat 7 years ka IELTS ka experience hai. She is going to be taking classes for English for these examinations. Okay. We saw questions from polity or constitution and governance. Now, a lot of students have the habit of ignoring this governance part. UPSC may be hota hai, yaha par bhi hota hai. We focus too much on polity and constitution and we end up ignoring governance. We will make sure ki governance aapka achche se cover hota hai. The third one, third area where we saw questions in the past examination was Indian modern history. This year, because word history has been included in UPSC syllabus after 2015. So 2013 was done, but 2015 was not But new exams which are coming, we are seeing that word history is also a part of the syllabus. For example, ASRB, mein, word history has also been placed. So I'm expecting the word history might also see some questions. So we will be covering that as well. Culture, uh, which is also called as in Indian ancient history, we will be covering that. Geography. After that, we saw questions from there. Indian economy and macroeconomics. I've already started revising this according to the new pattern. Jo bhi chode chode nai changes ho rahe uske se revision start ho chuka hai. That will also be useful. Computer application, general science, accountancy and auditing. Now, yahan se bahut zyada questions nahi aate, but they touch upon very basic areas. And the trick here is that accountancy is such, auditing is such, where if you want to be confident about the basics, you have to cover the entire thing. Otherwise, kahi na kahi basics mein aap first jaoke. We saw that in SEBI also. Keeping that in mind, accountancy or auditing ko bahut detail mein cover kiya gaya hai for SEBI examination and it has been given to the students. Similar thing is going to be done here because bahut achche level ke exam hai, we don't want to leave any stone unturned and therefore accountancy and auditing is going to be covered in detail so that you are very clear about the basics. Okay. Industrial relations and labor laws, four new labor laws have already been introduced and they have already been covered for this examination. Aapko wo immediately mil jayega. Then we have quant. Quant, we saw questions from labor laws and industrial relations in the past exam also. Current affairs, which includes spotlight and PIB current affairs is going to be more than enough. And we saw some questions on basics of insurance also. Very, very basic questions. Okay. So this was the pattern or the areas from where questions were asked in the 2015 examination. A total of 13 topics. Number unlucky hai, but this will lucky banayenge. We will turn that around. So, total of 13 topics who are being asked in the examination in 2015. Okay, let's move forward. Cutoff. Let's have a look at the cutoffs of past year. This is very, very interesting. One second, guys. Okay. So, total number of candidates who appeared in the recruitment test, RT Matlab recruitment test, were 1,63,316 this year keeping that trend in mind I think I would want to expect or I would be expecting about 2,50,000 students very easily. Itne students exam likhenge this is an expectation based upon uh, the time period that we are going to have for this examination. Okay. Total number of candidates for, for general 78,000 OBC 50 SCST 
कट ऑफ देख लेते हैं ये तो फाइनल नंबर ऑफ कैंडिडेट्स 170 सेवेंटी येस दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इसको प्लीज एक बार अच्छे से समझ लो वॉट दिस इज इज इन रिक्रूटमेंट टेस्ट द कट ऑफ फॉर अनरिजर्व कैटेगरी स्टूडेंट्स फॉर सिक्सटी सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव एंड दिस इज स्टैंडर्ड ये तो स्टैंडर्ड बना दिया उन्होंने ओके फॉर ओ बी सी इट वॉज सिक्सटी पॉइंट फाइव थोड़ा सा कम था एस सी का उससे थोड़ा सा कम एस टी का उससे थोड़ा सा कम पी एच का काफी कम था फिफ्टी वन एंड फोर्टी फोर ओके नाउ सिक्सटी सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव इज द कट ऑफ हेयर लेट से सिक्सटी सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव को थ्री से मल्टीप्लाई करें तो कितना आएगा वन नाइनटी एट प्लस वन पॉइंट फाइव वन नाइनटी नाइन पॉइंट फाइव लेट्स टेक इट एज टू हंड्रेड दो सौ नंबर आपके बने इन टू थ्री बिकॉज द कट ऑफ इज गोन बी डिसाइडेड लाइक दिस आप मल्टीप्लाई बाई थ्री करेंगे एंड देन इंटरव्यू मार्क्स एड करेंगे एंड देन देर फिगर आउट द मेरिट लिस्ट सो अ पर्सन हु स्कोर लेट से टू हंड्रेड इन लेवल वन और टीयर वन क्वालिफाइड फॉर टीयर टू नो वट हैपन इन टीयर टू विच इज द इंटरव्यू इंटरव्यू में आपने देखा फिफ्टी इज द मिनिमम स्कोर दैट यू नीड लेट से यू वर राइट ऑन द मार्क विद अ स्कोर ऑफ टू हंड्रेड आपके दो सौ नंबर थे पूरे या लेट से सिक्सटी सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव थी आपके लेट से सेवेंटी थे ओके अराउंड थ्री एंड हाफ मार्क्स अब अब दी कट ऑफ सेवन इंटू थ्री टू हंड्रेड टेन दो सौ दस नंबर थे आपके प्लस इन दी इंटरव्यू द कट ऑफ इज मिनिमम कट ऑफ इज फिफ्टी लेट से यू स्कोर सिक्सटी फाइव फॉर एग्जाम्पल सो योर स्कोर इज टू सेवेंटी फाइव Even with a 65% score in interview and a comfortable gap between the cutoff and your score, you will not have cleared the examination because the cutoff was 297.3. Let's make it 300. 300 बना देते हैं कम से कम. 300 बनाने हैं अगर तो यहाँ पे आपको 70% से काम नहीं चलेगा. You need at least 80%. If you score 80% here, कितना आएगा? 8 into 3, 24. 240 and then let's say an average score of 65 here 305 tab aayenge banenge either you are certain that you are going to score an 80 percentile or an 85 percent in interview then you can reduce this 80 percent requirement in tier 1 otherwise this requirement in tier 1 is going to remain at 80 percent so where in all the other examinations agar upsc le so we think that 50 percent is enough if we talk about rbs ab or nabard we think that 60 टू 70 परसेंट इज अनफ 70 परसेंट अगर स्कोर है तो आपका क्लियर हो ही जाएगा ओके दिस दिस इज वॉट हैपन्स इन आरबीएसएफ और नवाड एग्जामिनेशन हेयर यू हैव टू टारगेट 80 परसेंट आपको टारगेट कितना करना है 80 परसेंट दिस इज वेर द कैच इज यू हैव टू ट्राई एंड स्कोर मोर सिलेबस छोटा है सिलेबस इज ईजी बट विद ईजी सिलेबस कम्स द रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ इंप्रूविंग और मेंटेनिंग एक्यूरेसी प्लस हाई स्कोर दोनों ही चीजें ध्यान रखनी है यू कैन नॉट रिड्यूस योर लेट योर एक्यूरेसी गो डाउन यू कैन नॉट लेट योर ओवरऑल स्कोर और ओवरऑल अटेम्प्ट गो डाउन अटेम्प्ट भी अच्छा होना चाहिए नाइनटी परसेंट अटेम्प्ट होगा देन ओनली यू कैन होप दैट यू विल गेट एट्टी परसेंट एक्यूरेसी मतलब एट्टी परसेंट स्कोर आएगा एक्यूरेसी अगर अच्छी होगी तो सो दिस इज समथिंग दैट यू हैव टू मेक श्योर कि आप कर रहे हो नाउ दिस इज दाइएस्ट मार्क्स ऑप्टेन्ड बाई कैंडिडेट तो ये हमें हाइएस्ट लेके चल रहा हूँ 300 is the highest that I am assuming. Of course, the cutoff is going to be let's say 270 to 300. But if you are successful, you can never target this. You have to target this. Then you will end up here. If you target this, you will end up at 240. That is not required. If you want to do the second act, then you might as well not take the examination. You cannot target this. There is a reason that they have given this benchmark. They have given given this benchmark because they want the serious aspirants to look at it and target it. भाई 300 target करना है 80 percent चाहिए मुझे. This is what I require in tier one. Otherwise, I am not going to go ahead. I might as well do something else with my life. Okay, very very important. Total marks of interview were 100. Total marks of written were 100. But they were multiplied by three in order to make the ratio 75 into 25. I hope it is clear. ये तो मैंने समझा दिया था आपको आई ऑलरेडी क्लैरिफाइड दिस ओके नाउ वेयर आर द प्रीवियस ईयर पेपर्स अवेलेबल लेट मी क्लैरिफाई दैट इज वेल द प्रीवियस ईयर पेपर्स आर अवेलेबल हेयर यू गो टू द वेबसाइट अनुजिंदल डॉट इन ऑन दिस वेबसाइट यू गो टू दिस लॉग इन पेज लॉग इन आईकन सॉरी 
ये लॉग इन आइकन पे क्लिक करना है आपको देर इज अल लॉग इन आइकन विच यू विल सी ऑन द टॉप राइट कॉर्नर यू टू क्लिक ऑन दैट वंस यू क्लिक ऑन दैट यू विल बी टेकन टू दिस पेज वेर यू हैव टू साइन इन या तो साइन इन करोगे या साइन अप करोगे दैट इज अ फ्री रिक्वायरमेंट सो यू लॉग इन इफ यू नॉट लॉग इन बिफोर यू साइन अप यू गो टू ऑल कोर्सेज सेक्शन यू विल सी ऑल द कोर्सेज हेयर एंड दिस इज द वन फॉर ई पी एफ ओ एंड ए पी एफ सी ये देखो फ्री यहां पर लिखा हुआ है दिस इज द फ्री कोर्स विच इज अवेलेबल विच हैज ऑल द प्रीवियस ईयर पेपर्स प्रीवियस ईयर पेपर्स हैव ऑलरेडी बीन पोस्टेड हेयर अदर थिंग्स आर ऑल्सो बींग पोस्टेड हेयर यहां पर सारी इंफॉर्मेशन आई विल बी पुटिंग वन बाय वन रिलेटेड टू ए पी एफ सी एग्जामिनेशन ई पी एफ ओ हैज ऑलरेडी कंक्लूडेड तो ई पी एफ ओ की सारी इंफॉर्मेशन हटा दी गई है वी हैव ऑल दी ए पी एफ सी इंफॉर्मेशन अवेलेबल हेयर ई पी एफ ओ जब बाद में आएगा वी विल पुट दैट अगेन बट फॉर नाउ ए पी एफ सी की सारी इंफॉर्मेशन दैट हैज बीन पोस्टेड हेयर इट इज कंप्लीटली फ्री फॉर ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स गो इन हेयर डाउनलोड द प्रीवियस ईयर पेपर स्टार्ट अंडरस्टैंडिंग द पैटर्न एंड द सिलेबस ऑफ द एग्जामिनेशन एटलीस्ट दिन में एक घंटा तो निकाल सकते हो टेक आउट एन आवर सॉल्व वन पेपर एंड सी फॉर योर सेल्फ कि मैं मेरा स्कोर कितना बन रहा है आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू द बेंच मार्क ठीक है ना बेंच मार्क मैं आपको बता ही चुका हूँ आई ऑलरेडी शेयर दैट विद यू ओके सो दिस वॉज ऑल फॉर दिस सेशन आई होप इट वॉज यूजफुल आई होप द ए पी एफ सी एग्जामिनेशन बिकम्स फ्रूटफुल फॉर अ लॉट ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स हु आर हु हैव बिन प्रिपेयरिंग हार्ड फॉर द लास्ट टू थ्री ईयर्स और सबके लिए काफ़ी यूजफुल हो जाए एंड अ लॉट ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स आर सर्टनली गोइंग टू गेट थ्रू इफ यू वर्क हार्ड If you need any help, you can give me a call also. The number is available here on the website. मैं अगर ये यहाँ से हटा दूँगा, the number is available here. Yes, I think ये छुप गया है यहाँ से. So you can go to the website on the top right corner. You will see my number. You can call on that. Let me just write it down here. And you can you can also send a mail if you have any queries. this is the number and you can write to me at this email id and i will be happy to resolve your queries okay so let's close the session i hope it was useful i hope you will be able to prepare well for the upcoming apfc examination all the best guys take care bye bye